Hello? Honey, are you at the church? Uh-huh. Hey, honey, I was just considering the raise that you got at your job. Uh-huh. Can we give a little bit to the food shelter this month? How much? Hundred dollars? Sure, why not? Really? Oh, I was looking at our tithes. Pastor Doug was just preaching on tithing, and I thought maybe we could also bring up our giving to a tithe this year. Are you saying 10%? Yes, if that's okay. Well, if that's all the tithe is, then just double it. Uh, oh, and there's the building fund. I really wanted to pledge this year. How much were you thinking? $1,000 for the year? $1,000 for the year, huh? Well, that sounds like a worthy cause. I'll tell you what. Just pledge that amount every month. Uh, and one more thing. The music minister's card just broke down, and I thought maybe that we could help. You are so thoughtful. Have him go down to the car lot, pick out whatever he wants, make sure it's fully loaded, and pick yourself out something, too. Love you, too. Okay, bye. Bye. Um, uh, anybody know whose phone this is? Good morning, church. Don't you love that? Huh? That summarizes deep down what many of us think, right? Uh-oh, pastor's talking about giving. Here we go. Whose phone is this? Not mine, right? Not mine. So I get that. And so, hey, let's just laugh about that. Let's be honest about that. Uh, so this morning we're wrapping up our series, The Way We Worship. Over the last couple of months, we've been talking, or I've been talking, excuse me, about this personal, this personal tension of mine that exists. You know, this personal tension that is, do we, do I really see my need for God? And I think we're all in this, and so we've, we've moved that tension to, do we see our need for the worship of God? And I confess, I confess it very often, very often I simply don't see my need for God or my worship of God. And this was born out of those verses in Ecclesiastes, if you remember, the wise preacher calls us to worship, and as he calls us to worship, he says, don't come just making your demands before God. Don't just come kind of, you know, bargaining with God, God, if I do this, then you need to do that. But come to him, because God is in heaven, and we, he says, after all, God is in heaven, and we are on earth. And that, when I read that verse, it jumped out at me, because so much of my worship is about me. So much of my connecting with God is, is about me, and really, I'm up in heaven, and God is on earth, and God exists to serve me. And I hated to admit that to you as your pastor. And I think what we've done, even in the church, is we've developed this kind of consumer mentality when it comes to worship. And so let's just, we said, let's just be honest about that. Let's be honest about how our hearts need to change, because deep down, I think we do say, I think we do know, God, you are God, and I am not, right? We do know that. And deep down, there is something in us that longs to worship God. Deep down, we know, we just know, something in us says we were made for worship. So over the last couple of months, that's what we talked about, this way of worship. And we've seen clearly, God wants us to know him, and he's revealed himself to us. Through the stories, through the written word that's in our Bibles. He revealed himself through the living word, through his son, Jesus Christ. And so what do we need to do? We need to spend time getting to know him because that will increase our desire for worship. We talked about the importance of prayer and putting ourselves in that path of getting to know him, in that place of worship. We also talked about how important it is for us, right, to come together and, and worship together. Why? Because I get to see more of God when I see God in you. And we're just better together. And so last week we talked about everyday worship. What does that mean? Not just in, in worship in our personal prayer lives, and our personal Bible reading time, but what does it really mean to worship God by how we serve, by how we love each other, not just in the church, but in our world, in our community? How do we give ourselves to the thing that Jesus cares about? But in wrapping up this series today, 
we're going to talk about another important way of worship. It's unbelievably clear, it's throughout your entire Bible, of why people gather to worship. And the reason is, I'm just going to say it, they gathered to give. And very specifically, they gathered to give of their resources, of their money, okay, as an act of worship. Now, here's what I know. Here's what I know. I've been doing this for a long time. When I start preaching about giving, some of you love it. You're just all about, yes, let's all get on board together. Let's get everybody excited about it. Let's see how important giving is to our lives. Let's get at it. Because I know I've given and God has blessed me. You get excited about that. Others of you are like, oh, bummer, I should have skipped today. Why didn't I skip last week so I didn't have to come this week, all right? And some of you might even say, Pastor John, I just invited a friend here, and of all, can't you just teach on, just like Jared was singing about, Jesus' love for me, can't you just do that? Well, today, I think you're going to be surprised. Because today, I would simply want to talk about the value of worship in our lives. And how by giving, it, giving to it is actually giving to the best value you have in your lives. And you might be saying, oh, okay, it's just another sales pitch, Pastor John. This new spin the pastor's going to try to do to get me to give more. Just, just relax, all right? Chill, hold on, give me a chance here. Because here's what is true about at least how I spend my money. I spend my money on the things that I value. So, for instance, in my house, there are a ton of things that need to get fixed. I mean, I need my floors to be redone. I should get new countertops. I should get new cabinet fronts. There's plaster that's being cracked. You know, it needs to happen. And maybe someday we'll get to that. But in the past, we could have spent our money on that. But instead, we try from time to time to go on a rather inexpensive family vacation. Why? Because... Just Shri and I, that's what we value. Not that the other's wrong, we just value that versus fixing up our home. There's a lot of things that we choose that we value for our kids. So, for instance, we value Bible summer camp for our kids. And we value after-school stuff for our kids, like sports and music. You know, the stuff where other people yell at our kids so I don't have to. That's what I like. We value that. And so we don't always get them the latest and greatest name-brand clothes. If my kids want that, awesome. You can pay for it. That's how it works. We don't pay for every time they want to go see a movie with their friends or go out to eat at DQ. That's on you. Get a part-time job. You can do that as much as you want. I don't care, all right? We don't go crazy at Christmas or on their birthdays. Not that that's bad if you do that. That's great. But for us, we value some of this other stuff, some of this other bigger stuff. See what I mean? We spend our money on what we value. I mean, am I right with that? Just look at your bank statement. From your bank statement, you can tell, you can tell yourself what you value, how you spend your money, whether it's a car or, you know, Walmart bills or Cabela's or cable TV, whatever. We spend our money, it proves to us what we value. So today, as I'm continuing in our worship series, I'm going to continue to lift up the value of worship. Because I believe this, worship of God is your best value. And if you're like me, I don't want just a good value. I want the best value. I Googled that term this week, best value. There's all kinds of things that are, that are saying it's the best value. You got best value hotel. Let me tell you, that does not look like the best value, all right? You got best value appliances, best value electronics, best values for mutual funds, whatever. Very simply, how I'm getting at this. How do, does giving display this best value that I have in worship? How does giving, and specifically I'm saying, giving to the church, display something that I value in my life? So here we go. Let's talk about them now. i got four values that I think. Are you ready? No. See, you already answered the phone. You're here today. You already picked up the phone. So are you ready? You can write these things down. Number one, I value the priority of God in my life. You may say, oh, Pastor John, that's a little heavy-handed. Well, think about it. We see it all through Scripture. We see it right from the beginning, the story of Cain and Abel. We see it in the New Testament with Ananias and Sapphira, from the commandments of Moses all throughout that, to how Paul teaches constantly what Jesus taught, what Paul taught the early church. Our giving is kind of the rubber meets the road test of our priority of God in our life. So think about this. Do we really believe that God is over everything? Do we really believe that everything I have is his already? Because sometimes I really think we forget that. I really think we don't value that. It's not just that God has given me everything. It's just that everything he's given me is still his. 
Once again, why? Because God is God. He is in heaven. I am on earth. Psalm 24, 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. In other words, I belong to him and everything I have belongs to him. And so the very first thing that I've got to understand when it comes to giving, and if you don't understand this, that everything is God's in the first place, here's what I'm telling you, don't give if you don't understand that. Because you're never going to give from the right heart attitude. And we see this clearly taught. We see this in the Old Testament. When they learned to tithe, there it is, the scary word. When they learned to tithe, giving 10%, it wasn't always scary for them. Why? Because they understood this value that everything I have is God's anyway, and so I'm just giving back as a display of my gratitude to him 10%. That's how I worship. It was common sense. Solomon wrote about it in Proverbs. Proverbs 3, honor the Lord, worship the Lord with your wealth, and with the first fruits, that's the tithe, with all your produce. It's a form of worship. Why? It's all his anyway. I'm just displaying by giving that I value that truth. Now, some people might say, oh, that tithing stuff, that's just an Old Testament thing. All right? All right. Well, actually, Jesus, he took it up to another level. And this is where I personally experienced some conviction in my heart. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says this. He's talking about values again. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroy them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. I got all kinds of treasures in my life. I love rust, and I love moths. I do. I love stuff that rusts. Cars, four-wheelers if I had one, clothing, furniture. You guys say, oh, I don't like clothing. Yeah, you do. You're, you're hunting clothes. Don't tell me those are cheap. I know they're expensive. You value them. Those are our treasures. How excited do I get when I think, oh, I can buy this you know, used car, but this new car for me, you get excited about that. How excited when we open a gift and it's a new gun or, or stuff that rusts. Not that that stuff's bad, but compare it to what you really value, the treasures of your heart. Do we treasure and value the things of heaven? That's what Jesus is saying here. That's why there's conviction here. Don't you love it? Jesus always gets at the heart with this stuff. And that comes back to this tension in my life. Do I see my need for God? For the things of God? Things in heaven. Do, my, do I really see my need for the worship of God? Because he is God. And it's all his anyway. That leads me to number two. How does giving display my value for worship? I value my place. So not just the place, but I value my place where I can come for corporate worship in my life. In other words, I'm asking myself, do I really value these times when we come and get together? Do I value that? Do I value that something happens, something bigger happens in my worship of God than when I'm just by myself? Now, now let, let me just be clear about this. I am not saying that ultimately your motivation to give is just to pay the church bills. That's not a, bad, that's not a good motivation. Ultimately, we are motivated to give to God. Follow me on this. Ultimately, we're not motivated just to pay Pastor John and Jared's salaries, all right, and the rest of the staff. Ultimately, we give to God because our motivation needs to be, I'm giving to God for a place where I can worship him. And you don't give to a person or even in our minds, so it's kind of hard to get your mind around, even a specific place, I give to the place of worship, to a prepared environment where I can come and worship. Now, you've heard it. I've heard it, certainly. You might have even said it. All the church wants is my money. I would start by saying, partly, no, that's not true. What we want, that's not the right way of thinking about it. Rather, the right way is what we want is we want to invite people to the worship of God. And if you want to invite people into the worship of God, you value that. And if you value that, then you give to that. You give because you want to hear life but relevant message. You give because you want to worship together and you, and, and you want to hear the music leader sing because you're tired of your own singing in the shower. It's just not working for you anymore. You give because, wow, I want my kids to worship God in a place that's, that's relevant to them. 
Do you realize that Richie and his team and the leadership of the church, it is a value here to provide an environment where kids can worship God. You know, it's so much of a value that part of our value around that and part about how we describe that is we want your kids to beg you to go to church because they love it so much. They just can't wait to come and worship. We say that out loud. We want kids begging their parents on Sunday, Mom and Dad, can we go and worship? If that's something that you value, we display that. Does this make sense? You display that value by giving to it. This was clear. It's clear in your Bibles. I'm just bringing it out. See, where did the tithes, where did the 10% go in the Old Testament? It went to a group of people, a whole tribe of people called the Levites. They were the ones who prepared the environment for the worship of God. Numbers chapter 18. As for the tribe of Levi, Levi, your relatives, I will compensate them for their service to their tabernacles, their service of worship. Instead of an allotment of land, God didn't give them any land, I will give them the tithes from the entire land of Israel. God was taking care of those who led worship. Now, hear me, look at that verse closely. It doesn't say, now give your money to the Levites. It doesn't say that. It says they were to give it back to God. Then God used it for the establishment of worship of him, for that place of worship. Same thing happened. Remember in the story, they, they, they built the, the first huge Old Testament, and it was uh, Old Testament temple, and it was a gigantic <laughs> building project. And the people gladly brought their offerings, and they gave it freely. They gave it first to God, understanding that it was going to be used for a place of worship. But look how it's described. The people rejoiced over their offerings, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to who? To the temple? No, to God, for use of the temple. I, I, I thought about that, and I thought about 12 years ago, over 12 years ago, we embarked on a journey of this place of worship. And here's what I said to you. I said, if you have ever in the course of your life stepped into a church, not this church, but any church over the course of your life, someone somewhere made a sacrifice for you to be there. Someone at some point of history, whatever church you stepped in, said, I am giving to God so that people can have a place to worship. It was something that they valued. And then I said, now is our time. Now is our time to sacrificially give for a place of worship. And many of you said yes. Yes, I want to do that. I value worship. I want to have a place of worship. And look, over a few short years, how many people have come to worship. So in a way, I guess it is true. The church does want your money. (laughs) But not for itself. Let's think. It's for the value of the worship of God. It's for the value that we love to come together at worship. I value this space, I value this place, the music, the songs. I value that when I come, it's 70 degrees. And we're not sitting out in a tent. Because then we would be praying for Pentecost every Sunday. Please, flames of fire, Holy Spirit, we need it. So do you see the difference? It's, it's part of our values here at Hope. We, we value inviting people into the worship of God. So we display that value, we just give to it. Number three, there's more than that. I can say that I value, by my giving values the purposes, write that down, purposes of this church in my life. Do you realize that God, and this is the, it, it blows my mind when you really think about it, that God uses the church as the vehicle, as the means by which he displays who he is and his love to the world. Do you know that? From Jesus to his very first followers. And ever since that, generation after generation, God has chosen the church to work through to show his love to people. And by church, I'm not just talking a building, I'm talking its people. He provides, he provides for that pe- those people so much that in turn as they give, they get to be a part of what God is doing. We see throughout church history, you cannot deny it. And, and, and I didn't make up that strategy, by the way. As a matter of fact, I know myself. I've been doing this thing in the church, and I know the people in the church, just like me. I know myself. I might have said, God, there's got to be a better way. (laughs) There's got to be a better way than just using us. But this is an unbelievable display of God's mercy and power. God can use 
people, everyday people like you and me to accomplish his purposes. He can take weak little me and my little bit of giving and use it to accomplish unbelievable stuff. I've seen it happen over and over and over again in your lives. God uses people and their resources to further the gospel. Why? He wants us to be a part of what he's doing. And we see this. I, I'm not just making this up. Look with me. It's in your notes, Philippians chapter 4. Paul is writing this. As you know, you Philippians, it's the church in Philippi, you were the only ones who gave me what? Financial help when I first brought to you the good news, the gospel. And then traveled on to Macedonia. No other church did this. Paul is saying, I brought you the gospel of Jesus Christ. I shared the gospel. You fell in love with Jesus. And then you gave, and I took your offering, and then I went on to Macedonia to continue spreading, speaking the gospel. So in other words, Hope Church, think about this, play this all the way out. You are here today not just because of the preaching of Paul. You are here today because there was a church in Philippi who said, I want to continue Paul's mission. We are here today as a church because some people way back then chose to give to Paul's ministry. And that process was repeated over and over again. People heard the gospel, they responded, they said, I want to be a part of it, and they gave. From Peter, James, we got the early church fathers, we have the reformers, we have missionaries, pastors, evangelism, one generation after another after another. We are not just sitting here because God has blessed the church with spiritual gifts to people to do ministry. We are also here because God blessed people with financial gifts for them to do ministry. Because they valued the purposes of the church. And, and this is not just about more preaching. This is about people who chose to live out the gospel. Because God gave the church a commission of being the hands and feet of Jesus. It was about the entire message of Jesus. Preaching, yes, but helping the sick, feeding the poor. And over history, countless orphanages and hospitals and missionaries and ministries have been born out of the church because people wanted to display that. The church took seriously what James, the brother of Jesus, the leader of the early church, wrote. He said, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but you don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? And for the last 2,000 years, the church has said, we will respond to that. We value that. We value the purpose of the church. We want to be a part of it. We want to give to that. This week, right now as we speak, we have a, a, a team of people down in Haiti right now. And they're putting in a solar system for Pastor Dio in the church down there. You know what they also brought Pastor Dio? $8,000 from our half of our Christmas Eve offering. We said we would take our whole Christmas Eve offering and give it away. And half of that money went to the people of Haiti. So it's, it's going toward people who have need for their schooling, for the church, for their supplies, whatever they need, whatever Pastor Dio thinks they need. And a little bit later in the service, you're going to hear about where the other half went. To meet people's need. I'm not going to steal their thunder. But you gave, and then we as a church gave it away. Why? We want to be part of the whole mission of the church, the purposes of God. And what happens in the end of that? It's not about us. It's all about Jesus. It just makes sense. I give to the things that Jesus cares about. When they receive it, they give thanks. They honor God. And what's that? Worship. It's because we value the worship of him. But lastly, I have one, and this might feel a little selfish to you, but hang in, it's not. It might feel a little selfish for you. How does giving display my value of worship? I give because I value the personal, for you, personal blessings that it will bring in your life. So that sounds kind of almost, you know, opposite. I suppose we're supposed to be giving to, to give it away, and now I, I, I can give out of the motivation that I want more blessing. Yes, you can. God talks about that. God blesses us, right, so he can bless us for things that we can enjoy, but also so we can give more away. I want, to see, I want you to see a very familiar verse. You hear it all the time when people talk about giving, and, and, and it's about the nation of Israel when they forgot this principle. They, God says this to them. You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due me, and now you're under a curse. For the whole nation you've been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. So there's enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of Heaven's army, 
I will open up the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. God called them out. You're cheating me. And they said, God, where have we cheated you? Well, you cheated me because you took all the blessings I gave you and you ran with them. You forgot where it came from. God is saying, give back a portion of what I've given you. And remember, I want you to see it in the verse. What's it for? It's a display of worship. Bring, so there will be enough food in my temple. Resources for worship. But if you give, this is, the, this is the great thing that God says, but if you give that away, don't think for a moment that you're losing out on the deal. As you give to worship, he writes this, test me. Test me and I will even bless you more. In other words, God's saying, if you're not buying this, if you think, ah, it's just not really true, put me to the test. I'll show myself to you. You can't outgive me. I will bless you so much more that you won't even have room to take it all in. And once again, some people might say, oh, that's just, you know, that's some Old Testament tribal stuff. All right? Okay? Paul says the same thing when he's talking to the church. St. Corinthians, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. Don't give reluctantly or response to pressure or a Sunday morning sermon. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need so that you always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with other people. In other words, don't give to the church or anywhere, really, if you're just going to go complain about it. Don't give because the pastor is pressuring, pressuring you and you think he's putting a spin on it. Give to God cheerfully. Why? Why does Paul say? Because you get to partner with the mission of the church. You can give because God has been generous with you. God is going to provide for you then as you give and not just provide. Notice what it says. Circle the word in your notes. Generously provide. Why would God give money back to you? Why would God give resources back to you? Why? So that you will have all you need. Do you hear that? It says all you need. It doesn't say not all your greed. It says all your need. And then why else would he give you so much more? So that you will have a bunch left over so you can keep giving it away. Now here, growing up in the church, here's where I felt the church has kind of got off track on this. They give because they think they will receive. People give because they think they'll receive more blessings. And when they hear that word blessings, they think more stuff. I give. Oh, yeah. And God's going to give me more material stuff just for myself. And that fits great into our American culture of greed. It just fits great with that. I'm going to give so God gives me a new Escalade. I love it. God, here you go. Or a new lake home, whatever it is. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying give so God gives you more stuff. I'm saying give so God blesses you more. Look what Paul, Paul talks about it. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud. This is my last verse. And not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God, who gives us richly all we have. Why does God give you things richly? Why does he bless you? So what? Everything you need for your enjoyment. God wants you to enjoy life. But he also says, tell them, use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works. They should be generous with those in need, always willing to be sharing with other people. And by doing this, they'll be storing up treasures for a good foundation for their future, that they may have true life. So God is going to bless you with what you need to enjoy life. And by the way, that might be a little different than what you think you need to enjoy life. Because I can think of plenty of things that, oh, hey, I need all of this to enjoy life. And really, all of that is just going to be more problems, more things I need to fix, Right? More important than that, God wants to bless you so you enjoy life, but so that you can be generous and do good. And it says always being ready to share and share and share with other people. Why? Because you're like, it's not mine to begin with. I just want to share it. I want to bless somebody else. He wants to you, to you to be a part of what he's already doing. And then he says this, the biggest blessing, or let's say it this way, The biggest value I have is when I give is that I want to invest in some things that are eternal. That's what what Paul gets to that. By this, you'll be storing up treasures and a foundation for the future. It's an investment for the future. I want to invest in something that's going to last forever. Not that rust, not that moths, but something that's going to last forever. I think the problem when it comes, for me anyway, and for us, when it comes to giving, is we don't give out of a sense of expectation. 
We don't give and, and, and live then our lives with expecting, okay, God, where are you going to bless me today? God says, test me in that. You can try me in that. We should be living every day with an expectation of seeing God's blessings all around us. Noticing what God is doing. Seeing not only, God, what are you giving me, but looking for an opportunity where I can bless somebody else. Where I can do good and be ready to share with those in need. To live with an expectation that, okay, God, I get to be a part of what you're doing in this world. And you want to use me? <laughs> That's crazy. To use me to help in that. Do we live with that expectation? And God said it's okay to be living constantly with that expectation. All this comes full circle for me. Do I really see my need for God? Do I really see so much that I want to display it in my giving, my need for the worship of God, that I value that? I value not only my own worship, I value others' worship, I value inviting people into worship. Because if I do, it's just, it's just, it's just something I'm going to give to. Whether it's I get to see more and more people come to a worship service, or whether I get to see our church in, in a very hands-on way meet the physical needs of people around the world. So what would that look like for us if, if there was this shift of our thinking? That all of it's God's anyway. God, you are God, and I'm on this earth, and I get to partner with you in what you're doing. What would it look like if we had a shift of values? Where I don't have to think. Every time I think about giving, I don't have to cringe out of guilt or, or duty, or I just think, okay, i got to give my fair share to get the pastor and everybody off my back. But to make it an act of worship. God, you are God, and I want to see you glorified. It displays what I value. I live with an expectation, God, that I'm going to worship you today. It doesn't have to be Sunday every day. I'm going to look for some good that I can do so I can bless somebody else. Because as I bless other people, as I give to bless other people, God just simply blesses me with more and more. You just become a conduit of what he's already doing. That's something where we say yes. I want to say yes to worship. That is something that actually, as part of the worship service, we look forward to. What would it be if we look forward to offering time and we celebrated that? Because now I multiply in worship. Let's just pray around it. God, the way we worship, I would pray above all else, Jesus, that we would see our need for you. That we would see our need for the worship of you. That we would value coming together. It would be an important part of our week. It would be an important part of our midweek. God, that we would say, I, I, I value spending time with my life group. I value my personal time, my personal devotions. I, I value when I get to go and serve. And God, that we would also say, I value when I get the opportunity to give. So God, I would pray as those who give, you would pour out your blessings that you promise. Pour out your blessings, God, so much so that we could just continue to be a generous church. We could continue to be a conduit that pours the power of the gospel preached, but also the power of the gospel lived out and serving and helping and ministering to those who need it. Do your work. Have your way. And Jesus, it's all for your glory as we honor you. Amen. Amen. I want us to continue celebrating. I want to invite the uh, uh, ushers to come forward for this morning's offering. And as they do, uh, Todd, oop, I better get you the mic. It moved. I need to move. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. I'm Todd Bonin, the administrative pastor here. And I'm Lori Patterson, and I do the finances and the books. And Lori and I had a, a great experience this past week. Um, as you guys all know, as John mentioned, that uh, we give our entire Christmas Eve offering away. And this year, part of that went to Safe Park, the Shawano Area Food Pantry and Resource Center. And Lori and I had the opportunity this week to represent you guys giving the check to, to Safe Park. And Lori's going to tell you a little bit about uh, how that went. After we gave her the check, we could tell that she was very excited um, anticipating what was inside of that envelope. So she's like, can I open it now? Can I open it now? And so she opens it, 
and she takes a look at the check, and I wish we would have had this on video. She goes, woohoo! She was just so excited. Um, and then she shared with us that um, between another 5,000 given by United Way, between us and United Way, we have supplied their entire milk supply for the entire year. So. Woohoo! <laughs> Big woohoo. Isn't that great? You know, just what Pastor John was, was talking about this morning. You know, we don't want to give out a compulsion, but we do this because we can bless other people in our, other people in our community and care for them. Um, like uh, Jesus says in Matthew 10, and if you give even a cup of cold water to one of the least of these, my followers, you will surely be rewarded. You know, and we, as we show God's love and God's kindness to another, in this case, giving you a cup of cold milk, um, God blesses us for our obedience as we walk and as we follow him. So thank you. Thank each and every one of you that gave to our Christmas Eve offering that we could bless Safe Park with $8,110. And as uh, Pastor John talked about, um, the Haiti team is taking that same check, that same amount to our sister church in Haiti right now. So we'll be able to report back to you on, on what Pastor Dio is, is doing with that. So thank you for those that, that give to support all the ministries here, whether it's on Christmas Eve or whether it's on regular Sundays here to support the ministries, what we're doing with our kids and our life groups and our youth. Um, just to be able to keep everything going. Thank you so much. And if you want to connect in, if you've never connected in for giving, just grab one of these little envelopes out of the seat back in front of you. Take it along home. It's got all of our information on giving, whether it's electronically, by text, or bring this envelope back, that we can use this just to worship God. So let's stand and we'll pray this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you love us and you care for us and that you have blessed us with many material things that we can give them back to you, Lord, to your church, to those that need it, that we can just be a blessing to others, Lord Jesus, as we do your work. In your name we pray, amen. Have a great day, everyone. Jesus came for